Okay, so we are officially recording. I'll be smarter than the fish and turn on multiple participants so that you guys can share this morning. Hopefully you all have your coffee. I have mine, so as needed. All right, so we're gonna talk about, all right, Cade, good move. Okay, so today we're gonna talk a little bit more about assemblies, but I'm not gonna do a lot of yammering and you guys are gonna go off and build a V8 engine. So let's see, I will share my screen with you guys. And let's see what we got. So we're gonna do lesson 15 today. When to create sub-assemblies, modifying parts within an assembly. We're gonna change some appearances, which I think we've already pretty much covered as far as just changing colors, stuff like that. And then I'm gonna send you off to build a V8. Okay. So guys, let's imagine you go to work for Airbus and you're building the next gen of A380 super jumbo jet. Okay, the last thing you wanna do is open the entire layout with the engines, the coffee maker, the hydraulic system, everything. Okay, you would die of old age before that ever opened up and handling it would be just terrible. Okay, so we're gonna break stuff down into sub-assemblies and it's really, really important. So as some general criteria, okay, if you've got identical parts that are used in multiple places on a machine, like the 22 wheel bearings that hold up the A380, that would probably be a good thing to make a sub-assembly of. Draw it once and reuse it in multiple places. Okay. If you're gonna get something from an outsourced supplier, so I worked on the engines for the A380 and they came from Pratt & Whitney in a GE consortium, but that's another story. Okay, so if you've got something that's coming from an outsourced supplier, probably a good thing to make a sub-assembly of so that then you have a part number, you can go off and buy it, everything's good. Okay, and lastly, a good time to make a sub-assembly is something that you're gonna sell as a common repair part, like a small engine carburetor. So if you know that you're gonna sell this thing time and time and time again, you gotta give the customer something, some way to buy it, some identifier. And giving a sub-assembly a part number, making it sellable, real good thing. Okay, so you're gonna be drawing this simplified V8 today and one of the sub-assemblies that I'm gonna give you is the carburetor assembly. And you'll be able to pull that assembly in, plop it right there on top of the intake manifold, and you'll be able to then go into the individual components. But at the top level, this sub-assembly is gonna act like one giant chunk of solid bodies. Okay, so design in context. When we do assemblies, we can go up and down what we call the assembly tree and we can modify the components. So if you'd like to click along, you're welcome to. Uh, go under lesson 15 and there's something called the plate example. And the plate example looks like this. It's simply two plates they both have the same part number and they're bolted together with a common nut and bolt. So if you're given an assembly and you're looking at it and you're saying, wow, that really doesn't fit right. You know, I don't like how this looks or I need another hole. What you can do is you can just click on the object and you can say open part. It gripes at me because I used it last year. And this will open a new window and take you down into the component. So for example, I don't know, maybe I want a cutout window in this thing. So I'll put a sketch on the face.
I won't waste your time, but of course you should always fully dimension it. I think you probably get the idea. So again, as always, size and locate. There we go, fully defined sketch. Okay, so I just blew a little window in that plate. I get done with it, I'm gonna save it. And when I close out this window, it asks if I wanna rebuild, I'm gonna say yes. And of course, in every instance of that plate through my entire machine, my new feature shows up. So this is reinforcing the idea that in assemblies, the assembly file is nothing more than just a bunch of links. Okay. So we are linking to this file, to this file, to this file, and the nut, nuts underneath. Okay. okay, so that's how that works. So you can go back and forth, you can go into anything you want. You can also modify the components right here on the screen. So this open part will open you in a new window. I generally use this one uh, simply because I don't like seeing a lot of stuff on the screen. I like a nice clean screen, not a lot of garbage. However, sometimes it's nice to just say edit part right here in the assembly. Maybe you wanna line up a hole with another feature or at least get it close, something like that. So you can do the editing right in the assembly, or excuse me, with the assembly visible. So I'll click on this, maybe I'll drop a hole in it. You can see, even before I finished the feature, it dropped the other hole right in the opposite corner. Once I'm done editing, I just unclick edit component and it takes me right back up to the assembly level. So not a real hard concept, you know, something you can play around with. So both ways of doing it are nice, modifying it in another window. If it's a real busy layout, that can be nice. If you gotta see the other stuff around it, then just right click and say edit part and you can do it right there looking at all the other stuff around it. Okay. I find that today people don't tend to change part colors as much as they used to in the past. Back in the 90s, we were crazy about having these rainbow colored assemblies. Uh, so let's, let's try doing it. So, I mean, sometimes it's nice to be able to change colors to highlight something. So I always call this the beach ball, but if you right click and you do this little color wheel and hit appearances, if you hit the drop down, you can specify how you want to apply the color. So you can choose either the plate one, you can apply it at the component level, you can apply the change to the body at the assembly level. Uh, you can go through all this, or you can apply it to just a face at the assembly level. So let's do the component level. So let's say I want a nice bright red plate because I applied it at the component level, both of these light up in red, which is my color choice. And I'll say, okay. No, nah, I think green's a better choice. You like green better? Okay. So let's do that then. Let's 
Let's apply it at just the body level in the assembly. Well, that didn't work. All right, it's acting out on me again. Suffice it to say, it can be done. You can change just the body color at the assembly level. Again, I should have practiced more before class. Did you accidentally have both selected? I don't think I did. So I'm gonna click on just that face. I'll hit the drop down under the appearance. So let's see, we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay, we should be back to normal now. So if I choose just the body, actually, let's even try just the feature. All right. So let's maybe you, maybe you select the assembly side of it. When you have the drop down. Apply at the component level. All right, there we go. So again, I should have practiced more. Let's undo that. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the object. I'm going to go to the appearance icon, hit the drop down, choose the body. And I'm going to apply it at the, comp at the component level. Choose my color and say, okay. So now I've got just one instance of the component changing color. Phew, that was hard. Okay, and of course you can do it for all the other good junk in there. So just know that you can modify the components. All of the updates that you put in are reflected throughout your assembly. And let's see what else. So that will be very useful when you go to do your Stirling engines, because you're gonna do a lot of bouncing back and forth between the assembly level and the piece part level making changes. Okay, so that was all just adding a feature. Part appearances. And again, you can also access the display properties right over here through the display manager. So this color that I've applied, if I wanna get rid of it, you just right click on it. and say remove appearance. So all of your list of changes will appear right under your appearances tab. Okay, so that's cool. Minor stuff, but I really want you to uh, get the idea that None of the component stuff is imported into the assemblies. It all stays in the assembly documents and it's all associative. Okay, so this is the real meat and potatoes of the lecture today. So this is our continued practice of building assemblies. So what you're gonna do 
is you're gonna build this simulation of a Chevy 350. If you go over to the lesson 15 folder, you'll see a folder called V8 engine. What I'd like you guys to do is download the contents of this folder. And here's all the parts that are in, in the folder. Your job is gonna to be to take all these piece parts and put it together so that you have an engine that does exactly what mine does. So I can turn the harmonic balancer on the front and make the pistons go up and down. And you should also, and you can just bring in the carburetor assembly and put the assembly right on top of the intake manifold right here. Is it gonna be as hard as putting together a children's bike on the night before Christmas? Sometimes it can be. I've seen some people get it done in five minutes and be gone. I've seen some people make bad decisions and it took quite a while. But this is an excellent practice in building assemblies. Okay, so when you do this, my recommendation as always, bring in the central frame object, which in this case would be the engine block. Bring it in, float it, made it to the assembly principal planes, and then turn the planes off. Then what I would do is bring in a piston. There's one piston. You're gonna need a wrist pin. And all of this is spelled out uh, in the lesson 15 slides. Because again, this is not an engines course. So if you've never seen what's inside of an engine, that's okay. So the first thing I would do is put together one of these. So I would make the wrist pin into the bore. Make that coincident. And then if you take this face, made it right to the underside like that. Okay, so now you've got one piston, one wrist pin, and one connecting rod built up. Okay, and some of you are gonna say, oh, he just talked about subassemblies. That's probably a good thing to make a subassembly of because it repeats. Okay, that would be a trick question. Okay, you, you do not wanna make a subassembly of this. When you just make a um, linear component pattern, Nope. Oh. Okay, and then another excellent thought, but the problem is if I make this into a subassembly and then pattern it, what'll happen is every single one will have the same geometry. And as you look down the engine, these all have different bend angles. So that doesn't work. The thing about doing CAD and making sub-assemblies or making parts is that every time you change the form, fit, or function of an object, it should really have a new part number. 
However, what you can do to make your life easy, if I select all of these, I can do a copy paste. Control C. Yeah, Control C, Control V. Now what's nice is that it also copies the mates. So it's not a subassembly, but it saves you a bunch of work mating stuff together. And then you can just go slide it into the block. So for example, the skirt of the piston right here, you're gonna want that concentric with the hole in the bore. This connecting rod face right here, well that, it's gonna go right over the crankshaft. Let me hide this. So when you drop the crankshaft in, which is what I would, I would suggest as the second item of business once you get the block in, okay. This is not a perfect model, guys. I drew it kind of quickly. But if you do something like make this face right in here, the back edge, if you make that coincident with the back of the block, that's totally fine. Okay. And then you're gonna have two connecting rods going to each journal. That's a cylindrical face on the crankshaft. So one connecting rod goes to this side, one connecting rod goes to the opposite side. And you can see it populated right here. So that one's going down. This one goes to the other side. And they're all at different angles so that the cylinders don't fire all at once. And again, you can look at it back here in the lesson plan. So I broke it out step by step. I labeled everything. Here's what it looks like without the engine block in place or just turned off. And here's how everything goes together. I had a question about that crankshaft. Yeah, go for it, Sam. So once you make it um, like flush with that face, how else would you locate it? It's because you still want it to be able to rotate, right? Right. So what I would do, let's blank it out. So you've got this little mouse bite right in here that the crankshaft is concentric with. So if you make that face coincident on the back and you make it concentric in that journal right here, that's all you need. Then you'll be able to let the crankshaft rotate and watch the pistons go up and down. Okay, and the pistons will move just by nature of being coincident with the crankshaft, like we, exactly. won't, we don't have to do anything else. Nope. Okay. Now, what you're gonna find out is the bore holes for the pistons are actually offset a little bit. So your piston will be concentric in its, in its sliding bore. And then you're gonna have the side of the connecting rod sets the axial travel. And then these come up to the journal on the crankshaft Does this have to come out as fully defined? No. So if you were to fully define it, it would you wouldn't be able to spin the crankshaft. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm gonna stop yammering at you guys. The V8 is gonna be homework, but I want you to start it now, ask questions. Because again, not an engines class. If you have any kind of 
question on where does this go? How does this work? Let's uh, get it asked and answered. So I did have a question because I think I might have did last week's assemblies um, kind of wrong. Okay. Um, okay. I made the 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 base part like when when the document opened it asked to enter a base part and I did and I just like clicked it into place and it I think it made it fixed in space and not like defined by the origin the principal origin correct um, it always comes in fixed first and then I told you guys to float it and then made it to the principal plane okay so I did do that wrong how much would that take off on the homeworks? Uh, not much, 40, 50 okay. points. Oh. Yeah. Now, so what's going to happen is sometimes that will work out okay, but you will have times where you bring in that first part and it's just a little skewed off. And then when you go to try and put dimensions in, you start coming up with all angles instead of distances. And then you know, oh, okay, I forgot to float the thing. So you float it, you square it up, and then you can dimension your assemblies properly again. Okay. Yeah, you only make that mistake once. <laughs> well, maybe twice in my case. And I should probably, uh, I probably should have shown you guys. So I clicked on the crankshaft and I hit it. If I come over here to the crankshaft, I can click on show components and I can bring it back. Are you guys all good with the exam? Does anybody need me to go over, explain anything? I think I kind of beat that to death already. Um, can you go over part three just while you're here? Part three, so let's yeah, see. That one. I didn't oh. quite have time to finish it, but I think I was on the right path. Oh, the shift lever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the shift lever was, I was hoping not too hard, uh, but it did have a bunch of steps in it. Uh, I'll, I'll admit that. Okay, so here's my version of the shift lever. And I started off really, really simple. Just made a disc. And then I made a constant diameter uh, lever rod coming up out of it. And I was really lazy. I only have one sketch involved. And what I did was I used the circular profile option under sweep. So mm. I, I could have drawn a circle down here, but I was honestly just too lazy. So I said, okay. So now I've got my disc and I've got my constant diameter lever. I threw in some fillets, probably should have waited till the end. So that rounded off the edges right down here. Okay, then I did a cut revolve to get the taper on the sweep. And this was exactly like sharpening the pencil.
So I did a closed region up here so that I'd have some kind of a cutting volume. And then I needed something to revolve about. So I put in a construction line right here and I went from the center of the end straight out and I made it perpendicular. And I used this construction line to revolve about. So I revolved it. I had to have some threads to put the knob on. So I did a cosmetic thread. I did it the insert annotation and cosmetic thread. And I just chose the full length going end to end. I always do a chamfer on any rod that I need to thread. It just helps the die nut start, starts the thread easier. Okay, this little dog leg at the bottom. I debated about putting this one in. This was a lot like the handle on the coffee cup. It was drawn on this plane. And when I extruded it, I did the mid plane option. So it went in both directions right out of the center. What I was hoping you were going to see in this is that I put all of my dimensions on this edge. And then so, did an offset. And did an offset. Exactly. That's what I wanted you to see. So then it was just an extrude. And lastly, I popped the half inch hole in the center for the pivot pin. And is that, that's just like the shifting handle there for switching gears, isn't it? And the uh, yeah, kind of. So this goes to something called the transfer case. This controls whether you're in four wheel drive or two wheel drive. Uh -oh. So it just slides a bunch of gears around. You have to be stopped to use this lever. But it's, it's the, it's the lever you actually can use in the car though, to switch between. Absolutely. Your cases. Yeah. Okay. I showed you a picture of the real one installed. Yeah, there's, there's actually two of these levers side by side. So one controls two wheel drive, four wheel drive, one controls high range, low range. Yeah, I have a, um, a Jeep um, Wrangler, mm -hmm. like over on my lawn there, that we're releasing. And I think there's only one lever on the Wrangler that does that. And there's yeah, just there four is. options. Um, but it's there. I would have learned how to drive it, but I don't know how to do standard. Uh, it's a perfect vehicle to learn standard on. Oh yeah. I almost drove into a lake trying to learn standard though. So, <laughs> uh, you know, that's what the ignition switch is for. There'll be a bu bunch of bucking and snorting, but you turn the key off, everything does stop. <laughs> No, my dad like had his handle on the emergency brake. He had his hand on it. He was, he was ready to pull it. <laughs> skid that doesn't stop with ignition. What's that, Emmanuel? I skid that doesn't stop with ignition key. It's a diesel. <laughs> oh, it's diesel? Yeah. <laughs> Mine has a button in my car, so I can't stop it unless I'm not moving. I have to pull the brakes. I got to tell you, the first time I jumped in my wife's Yukon Denali, we we're at the dealership and the guy says, oh, take it for a ride. And I'm looking around, go, where do I put the key in this thing? And I'm looking, I'm looking, he says, push the button. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. My, uh, my grandmother, isn't still felt isn't past the uh the turning the knob for the gears yet she's trying to like push the letter 
because she had a car where you just push the letter and it goes into that gear. And I'm like, Grams, Grams, you gotta, you gotta turn the knob. And now you can summon the Tesla to come out of the parking lot and come to you. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm still very happy to have a car that I pulled the choke out, stomped the gas two times and turn the six volt engine over. <laughs> if I could drive that to work every day, I would. I have a bit of a problem with mine. Okay, Gage, shoot. I was about to say my, uh, my connecting rod is currently locked in place and is going through the piston. Okay, why don't you share your screen and we'll stop yeah. BSing on irrelevant stuff. locked in place. Do you see it? Well, it's, it's coming up through the wrong side of the piston, but that shouldn't matter. This shouldn't matter? Nope. Especially because like, I can't rotate it around the axis either. Doesn't matter. So try putting, make the piston concentric with the first bore that you want to insert it in. The All first right. hole in the block. Actually, one sec. I'm going to copy it over real quick so I can have one on the outside still. Okay. Good idea. And you do need to float and mate your block. Mate my block? Oh, yeah. I got to mate it to the plane. Yep. Shoot. And then just, should I just make it, uh, should I make it pretty much flat to this? Uh, no, you're oh, going to. backwards, isn't it? It's it backwards. is backward, but it doesn't really matter. So if you make, yeah, if you make that journal and the other one concentric, you're good. Boom. Oh, no, stop it. Oh, I think it's working. Maybe. Okay, so. It's, Spin the uh, the front pulley around. Let's see if it goes roundy roundy. Yeah, there you go. Someone to spin right for me though. It's weird. I notice that a lot of your models, you you guys, the class. Um, I think you've got a, a video option turned on. So like my models spin very easily, and I think you guys have something like. It's turned on spin in the plane of the floor or something like that. Yeah, because like mine skips to like to like thirteen different fucking oh sorry. Spins to like thirteen different things. You could literally like skips frames almost to go to like the next point of where it, it spins. Could, it could uh, just be our computers are slow. Yeah, that is a true statement. I could probably yeah. pull up a FPS counter. I got to do that seven more times. My, I know my SolidWorks tries to die like at least three times when I'm working on a part. Why won't it select? Hello? Hello? You're in mating right now. Oh, yeah, shit. It's that whole finish the command thing. It's the classic. I didn't notice that I was still working on that part on that. Where did that one go? They just go farther and further away. Yeah, that's one thing that can happen is you can get parts way off in space pretty easily. Like no joke, they just keep getting further away. And honestly, you don't know right now if you're even bringing them closer. Yeah, they might be like 20 feet down. All right, I think that's, no, nope, that's only I six. think they are 20 feet down from the shadows. Does look that way. Uh, one more. Where's this one going to spawn down here? 
There it is. Come on. I think it's already there. You're just bringing it up now. Just having a ray. Just having a ray of piss of reading pistons here. Raining down on it. I know in other packages you could create an array of sub assemblies and then you just say break. Boom. You... They should be almost no. Nope. <laughs> They're not almost there yet. I'm having a fun time with this episode. You, you can group them together so that they're all in like the same general spot and then select all of them and move them to the engine. Yeah, you could just move all of them. Or you could just select the, the the surfaces and make them concentric and they'd automatically move over to the Yeah, engine. that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to mate all the surfaces. That's probably the best plan. Yeah, it's just I got to like go from here. So I'm like... Yeah. That didn't help. And then sometimes what you'll find is that they get really, really fussy and you have to put an align option from the top of the piston to uh, the top edge of the engine block where the head gets bolted on. Wait a minute. Oh. That doesn't work. I just fucked up. Oops. Uh, I have a question concerning mine. Yeah, Aiden, go ahead and take the screen. Okay. Oh, yep, one sec. Sorry. Uh, let's see, share screen. Yep, go for it. Student education. So here we are. Um, remember you said something about how we couldn't really copy these because they all had unique geometry or something. So I was a bit worried that only okay. One so so let's back up with that unique. thought. So okay. you can't make a sub assembly out of it because the sub assemblies will all want to have the same geometry. However, what you can do is make one of those get it mated nicely and then do a copy paste and just create other instances of it. That is perfectly fine. So what uh, what Cade was doing then? Yes. Okay. And what about these? You don't need those. You can just delete those. Okay. Because when you brought in the carburetor sub-assembly, it pulled in all of its components with it. So you, you see that the one on top of your engine has the little butterfly valves already in place. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, farewell fellows. All right, uh, that's all I need to know. So I'll give up the screen to someone else now. Okay, all good. My piston is going the opposite direction of where it needs to be going. Okay. So then what you can do is you can set the angle of the top of the piston to 180 with the top of the block. You can do something like that and flip it over. So smart to mention that? Well, made it, yeah. Oh, made it, okay. What's well, the issue is if you look at... <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's concentric with the piston is concentric with the exactly. It's just there's an alternate solution to the problem. For mine on for that problem, I just had to I just rotated it like ninety degrees before I did the concentric with the crankshaft, and then it lined up. Well, yeah, I mean you can do an you can align the top of the piston to the head. Um, before you make it concentric and yeah, that can make life easier. Um, so what was it you wanted me to do? I don't know how you did that. Here, 
Yo, I got stuck here. Um, Professor, can you help me with that? Sure, go ahead and take the screen, the screen Sanskar. Right. Okay, looking good. You got a bunch of pistons in. Yeah, um, I can't make um, this um, like concentric with this part. Like I can't make it coincident. Uh, okay, so it. so what this part are we talking about? Uh, I forgot the name of this part. Like the block that goes on top of this. The block that goes on top of this. Um, okay, so let's just, let's try and make one component right now. So which, you're trying to put that piston into the engine? Um, no, I'm trying to put this block on top of um, that part of this block. Okay, too many pronouns in that. So click on a component that you want to work on. Let's start with that. Oops. Share. I think he's trying to put the intake manifold on top of the block. Okay. So share your screen first off. Oh. <laughs> Somehow I'm just not seeing it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, I see where you... So um, I was trying to make um, these parts coincident, but okay. like not doing it at all. Okay, so if you take on the intake manifold, You've got that angled face underneath. So click on one of those angled faces on the intake manifold. Here? Uh, that's not the intake manifold, that's the engine block. So the other piece, there we go, right there. Okay, so now you've got the angle face and the block and it's suggesting a coincidence, <laughs> which is fine. That'd be a good mate. Okay, good. Okay, so now grab that intake manifold and try and drag it around and see how it moves. Yeah. Okay, so the first problem you got is your engine block is not fixed in space. So you floated it properly, but you need to mate that block to the assembly's principal planes and get it all nice and fixed in space. Okay. That concentric is fine. That that's all good. But what I would do is mate say the back of the engine block to maybe the front plane. So pick the back of the engine block. Okay, click. Uh, 
Okay, so you've got the front plane. Now click the end. You are right there. So you you want to click on the front plane and made it to the end of the engine block. No, go to your left. There you go. Click. Click. No, you had you had it. Click on the front plane. Oh, God. Sanskar, how many how many gigs of RAM do you have in your machine? It seems like it's it's really laggy. I'd say eight. So this is killing mine. I have 16 soldered. Yeah, eight is barely enough to make SolidWorks run. I would consider getting another eight gigs and putting it in your machine. Okay. Are we turning in this V8 as homework? Yes. So this is the one where it's important to zip up the assembly files and all the components because so all, when, the gr all the graders are going to do is spin the crankshaft around and as long as the pistons are going up and down they're going to say oh great 100 done okay so when we're turning it in or when we're saving it rather you hit include all reference components right no uh let me show you okay <clears throat> okay, so in my case, if I wanted to submit this piece of work, I would save it, let it do a rebuild and save, close it, and then I'm going to come over to I got to click V8 engine assembly. I'm going to hold down the control key. So then the wrist pin, the butterfly, all the stuff. And I'll right click and say send to compress zip folder. And I'll call it my homework. And then just send this my homework zip file to the graders. It gives me like another question when I do that. Okay, what do you see in Ryan? I'll stop I sharing. Do you have just some junk files that you can try zipping up? What the heck is that? Virtual component. There's no virtual components in this thing. Do you want me to go through it again? Yeah, just hit hit cancel. So if you just okay, that's all good. I have no idea what that's trying to tell me. So I assembled it. <laughs> But the pistons are backwards. And I still don't understand what you're asking what you're saying. Okay, I'll show you in a second, Gage. Save internally. Hit the save externally option. I don't know why it wants that. I don't know how you got there. It's like it's asking whether it wants to take all of the components and s import them all into the file, which is absolutely not what we want to do. Yeah. So um, were you seeing this with the nut and bolt assignment? No, this is the first time I've seen it. That is really weird. Just say okay and let's see what it does. All right, I'll close out of this and open it. Okay. All right, so Gage, let's uh, 
Let me show you what I'm talking about. I am quite confused as well. I think I know why I'm lagging hard. All right, so. Look at my task manager and my quadro isn't even kicking in to use on SolidWorks. It's just not. Is, is it possible to click the include reference components from the state when you're saving the assembly? Because it does the same thing. It, it just includes a bunch of solid part files with it. I don't even know how that, how you'd even have an option for that. I can show you real quick if you. Okay, let me just show Gage this problem. So now I can spin it perfectly. I can spin my thing perfectly and I don't lag. And when I do that, it makes my quadro work, but that's weird. Okay. Okay, so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow away one set of pistons. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and take this set of components and I'm gonna put it into this bore. That was weird. Professor Martin was asking me if we were seeing weird stuff. Okay, so what I think I'll do is I'll do a mate and I'll choose the top of the piston and the top of the head. And I'll choose an angle of, well, actually, let me just choose parallel. Because this can be concentric and go up and down while still having the top of the piston be parallel. All right, where'd it go? So should I set my piston so that be parallel? If you're running into problems, yeah, that will help. Well, the issue is that my pistons are currently going in the downward direction. Right. It looks so, like my engine has legs. Exactly. So the normal of the face is going the wrong way. Whereas if you take this, well, the other thing you can do is you can use an angle. You get rid of that mate that I just put in. So I'll get rid of the parallel. So you can use an angle of zero or 180. We'll go from this face to this face. And I'll set an angle of zero. If if I set it to 180, it'll flip it flip it around. Why well, it doesn't change so, the alignment from the from the options? So you can change the mate uh, the mate alignments. So an angle mine already has an angle of zero, but it's not flush with the So I'm gonna make that zero to flip it around. Then I'll make the piston skirt to the bore. This is not, it's not working for me. Like mine's, All right, I'll give you the screen in just a second. Because I did it for all my pistons except for the first one. And I don't know what I did differently between the first and the other seven. Okay, so go ahead and share your screen, Gage. Mm. As you can see, my engine walks. Oh yeah, we call like that millipede. we call that the crab. Yeah, I have one cylinder that's actually where it's supposed to be. Okay, so here's what I want you to do: pick one of the problem cylinders, mm -hmm. and then 
Click on the top face of the piston. No, you got the Oh, the I had it backwards. So you, say, so you say click one of the top faces of the cylinder? No, top face of the piston. All right. Okay. And then now choose where the head's going to bolt on. So move moved to the right or left a little bit more. Is it right here? Nope. Move some more. There you go. Click. Oh, okay, I got to so mate. I just said it to me. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so now if you do, oh, let's see. And it tie aligned? No, nah, because that should flip the piston going the other way. Go ahead and try it and see what it does. Oh. You can put the constraint as a reference only. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> The alignment was reversed to prevent mate errors. Yeah. Okay, wait, we're good. We're good. I think it's it's in place, but it's oh it's now it's that's wrong. Yeah. Because I don't know, it's actually like this is solid. Because so the this other is not thing supposed to could, be like this. The other thing you could do is just you could hide the block, delete the piston and bring in another piston. Oh can I suggest something? Yeah, go for it, Emmanuel. Um, who was the guy? Can you choose the top of the piston? Top of the piston, yeah. yeah. To, to press and then choose the top of the block. Yep, one sec. You said choose the top of the block or top of the, yes. of the intake manifold? The top, the, where you want the, yeah, this one. Uh -huh. Then go on the left, very bottom, under the options. Yeah, choose the position and only, yeah, this one. Press OK. Mm. Did it fix it? No. 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 OK. I use this position only very often because it doesn't put a mate. It put, puts the stuff where you want them and then it deletes the mate on its own. My issue is that it reversed my piston, which upsets me. My piston is inside out. So if you set an angle between the piston face and the deck of the block up on top, you should be able to flip just the piston. If I, you said if I just, if I, if I make the top of the piston to the top of the block. Yep, and set an angle. But that's the issue is I tried setting it to 180 and I tried setting it to zero. And neither of them have worked. Uh, 180 degrees. Doesn't move. So, so now if you flip the mate alignment, what happens? Yeah, click. I, I did click. It's not doing anything. It's not didn't do anything. Maybe you have to do it to a reference entity? No, that's unlikely. No. What I did when this happened to me is I literally just grabbed the top of the block, uh, top of the piston, and like dragged it up. So like get out of the mate thing and like just take the top of it and drag it up into the cylinder, and that that worked for me. Just drag it up in the cylinder. Yeah, yeah, it will not go because of the the Concent you have yeah, the concentric. But... Um. Yeah, blow away the concentric and try dragging it up there, putting it back on. This one's having a bunch of errors. Okay, so go down to the mates at the bottom of the list and let's see which mates are a, are. A that's problem. the only one that's in the that's in the cylinder. Yeah, expand that mates. Hit the little triangle off to the left. Okay. Uh, just, just real quick, we are doing the homework question that's on the slides as well, right? The homework question on the slides. Excellent. Oh. Yeah, there, was like a, there was like a blueprint, um, another blueprint question that said you wanted us to do, but. 
Uh, let me go back and check that out. Oh, I made something coincident. You can see which mates you have if you right click on the piston and choose the 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 uh, the go on the top where the right this one. It shows you which constraints you have on this piston. This one has an angle definer. There we go. If I remove the angle definition now, there's nothing here. That's good to go. Did you see that homework question at the end of the yeah. lesson 15? I'm opening it right now. Yeah, go ahead and make a piece part print of that. Okay. Because every year I get to this point and I say, uh, the guys just don't have enough. They don't have enough practice in drafting. You see on your crank, on your uh, tree on the left, yeah, where it says crank craft, Grand, uh, grand shaft, what's the word? You don't have the minus. It's fully constrained. You are not going to see rotation. Yeah, it wasn't. It was rotating before. I don't know what happens. Maybe you have put some, some, some made you didn't really go into. Because you see, there, it's fully there. All right, guys, so you may have to leave for another class. We're at 9.07. I got a quick question. Um, if you yep. can take it. Um, but so like the top of my pistons, uh, some of them are like coming above like the, the head and some of them are like still below. So like, is that okay? As long as they like- Th That's totally them. fine. That's just my drawing error. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, right. you, you did everything fine. I just, I messed up. One of the pistons is locking it up because it's not the actual crankshaft itself. It's locked. Okay, guys. So, yes, turn this in for homework one week from now and turn in the piece part blueprint. And the piece part blueprint is a relatively quick thing. But I, I don't want to have you guys get out of practice with prints for the next exam. Do we need to make a sheet of this at all? Or do we just turn it in as no. an assembly? No. So all I want you to do for the engine is zip it up, send a zip file with the assembly and the components in it. The graders are just gonna open it up and they're gonna try and spin the crankshaft around. As long as they see the pistons going up and down, great, you get full credit for it. They will not check the, the mates we did, right? Well, they don't really need to. If the pistons are all moving properly, then it's good. Okay. Because I use hints, it's faster instead of coincidence. There's probably a bunch of different ways to do it. Yeah. No. As long as the engine looks like it would function properly, cool, great. We're all set. Okay. So, yes, one print, uh, one assembly. Professor. Yes, Sanskar. Um, will you be giving a problem like this in the exam or? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I should probably be a little less quick to answer that. So the format for the next exam is going to be, I'm going to give you an assembly already made, all made it up, nice and pretty. And then I'm going to say, guys, what I want you to do is do an assembly blueprint. And then I'm going to tell you, take two of the components and do a proper single piece part blueprint for two components. So just like last time, it'll be a three part, three question. So one assembly drawing, two piece part drawings. All right. Oh, you know, it'll probably help performance. Actually, no, I can't, I can't close that block page because I'm doing an assembly using the block. So you can't close the block. Well, you can hide the block. No, but what I'm saying is like, I have a separate tab in SolidWorks of the block oh, oh. when I started the assembly. 
Yeah, so you're talking to the other file as well. Yeah, that could be painful. So I don't think I can close that without closing my assembly. I don't know what happened, but now it's locked in place. It was free spinning, but now it's not. Uh, I can't control Z until the last time I moved to Piston. I mean, honestly, I think it'd be better time-wise to just blow away those those uh, connecting rods and pistons that are going the wrong way and just bring it in one at a time. Get, the, really? pist get the piston oriented properly in the bore. So I think SolidWorks wants to quit on me. There we go. Now I got it back to spinning. <laughs> 